One of the concepts that we talk about in FR that I'll talk about here as well is the no empty spaces concept. Now what is the no empty spaces concept? When you are in anatomy lab, the dissections that you visualize and the dissections that we do are obviously not true to real life form. So if you'll recall, when you were doing a cadaver dissection and you dissected, let's say, in the axillary fossa, you'll recall that the axillary fossa looked like a very giant, large, gaping hole through which you can see right to the subscapularis. Okay? So in other words, it seemed like once you remove the skin, that all of that area is completely empty and you can see right through to the back of the scapula. Similarly, if we're talking about our triangle here, if we fall off the semispinalis capitis, between that and the longissimus capitis, we talked about this triangle. Okay? Through that triangle is where we can access the superior oblique. Now that doesn't mean that in real life situations, that is an empty triangle. Because fascia, as we said, permeates throughout the entire body. So, for example, underneath the axilla, we have what's called the axillary fascia. So all of that area that is not taken up by bone or muscle underneath the skin is completely filled in with fascial tissue. Okay? Similarly, in this triangle, which is lateral to our suboccipital triangle, that triangle in real life situations is filled in with fascial tissue. So what does that mean? That means that when we're treating someone, let's say we're treating in the axillary uh, region, not only do we have to lengthen and treat the muscular tissue or the fascia associated with the muscular tissue, but you can also find adhesion or lines of tension within the um, levels of fascia which are not directly associated with any particular muscle. And that's the no free spaces concept or no empty spaces concept. So when you're treating, I always say don't just keep the muscular tissue involved or in mind because realistically we're not really treating muscular tissue like I always said we're treating the fascial um, contributions within the muscle, epimysium, paramecium, endomysium, as well as between muscles, as well as the empty spaces which are filled in with fascia. So even when you're looking for lines of tension in the axilla, you'll also have to look for lines of tension within the axillary fascia, or within the fascia that fills in the gap or the space in the suboccipital triangle, or in the triangle lateral to the suboccipital triangle, which we're talking about here. Okay? There's other areas in the body where this, uh, where this concept uh, occurs as well. So this is not the only two areas, but keep that in mind. There's no empty spaces in the living body. Okay?